everybody is Retro Gaming now back playing Riven, the sequel to Mist. And when we last left off, we were trapped in this moiety age, but then someone came by and gave us our trap book back, as well as this other journal. So what we are going to do is check out this journal and go ahead and read it. So uh, full disclosure real quick, this journal has notoriously difficult handwriting to read, so what I've done is printed out a transcript, and I'm reading from that and trying to flip pages at the same time. So just so you know, I'm not able to read this as easily as it's going to seem like. All right, let's go. <clears throat> I linked to Riven a week ago. The smell of the place overwhelmed me moments before I could see anything. With my sight only partially cleared, I stood motionless, peering ahead through a dim veil which was slowly lifting. There was a violent clang and bars appeared. I remember breathing slowly and very deeply, tasting the familiar riven air, but not recognizing a thing. I must have been hit with a dart right away. I thought it was an insect bite at first. I'm trying to remember it all, but it's... difficult, maybe because of the drug. There was a voice. A man I did not recognize stood before me, Rivenese, though he was wearing a dunny dress. He seemed to be talking to me, but the poison was already taking effect. A shadow crept in and I fell asleep. There were many voices, but I understood none of them, like hundreds of people whispering. I couldn't wake up. No matter. The dream did end. And now, to be here with Etty. It's... Oh, we'll check this out in a second. Been so many years, I didn't realize how much I missed her, like a piece of me that I'd forgotten I'd lost. She's beautiful and so full of warmth, but the years have also left her with a wound which was not there when we were children. I do wish she were more interested. It seems like I've been asking all the questions. It's awkward. No one asks me where I've been or what I've been doing. This hurts, but I understand it. Their beliefs are born out of ignorance and oppression. They were a gentle people, but they've had their nest destroyed, and now they fanatically cling to anything that might save them. Okay, let's read this note real quick. This is clearly added in later. I write quickly from my prison. Nela will return your book, which the moiety has intercepted upon your arrival. After questioning her, I've concluded that it was written by Atris for a very specific purpose. Gen will desire to use it, although he may have suspicions. If you can find my prison, you'll still need the combination to rescue me. Gen keeps it in his office. Then, I assume, we are to signal Atris. I think I know how it might be done, but don't signal him before I'm released. Catherine. So this note is clearly written to us. Um, there's some important things. She somehow got this note to us from prison, um, and indeed the moiety were the people who stole this book from us, and we could have implied that because we got the book back from them. Um, and so we have to find her prison... We don't know where that is, but it's also important to note that she says that the combination is in Gen's office, so if we get into that situation, we'll have to remember that. She also says she thinks she knows how to signal Atris, which is good, because we definitely don't know that. So uh, let's keep on going with her journal. Yeah, also, this is probably Catherine's journal, because it's the same handwriting. But why have they chosen to cling to me? I'm confused. As a child, I always felt out of place here. I never belonged. They misunderstood me, and I couldn't relate to them. But now, I'm overwhelmed by an intense feeling that I owe everything to them in this place. I thought I would never see them again, and yet I'm here. I've been given this second chance. But a second chance at what? Saving them? Fulfilling their prophecies? Being their savior? And then there's a drawing here. Uh, it's hard to tell what it is. It looks like sun or whatever. Some sort of doodle. The moiety. Atrus would want me to chronicle all that I've learned. I can at least record some of it. It seems that when Atrus and I trapped Gin on Riven many years ago, our efforts were witnessed by most of the inhabitants here. Two of the Rivenese even witnessed the confrontation with Gin at the fissure, where I linked back to Mist and where Atrus threw himself into the abyss. Of course, they understood little of what they were seeing, but somehow they were able to guess that we'd won. That Gen was no god, uh, was no god at all, but only a feeble imposter, a false god, and that we had trapped him here on Riven. I always hoped they would deduce this simple truth, but.
but further conclusions have astonished me. Atrus had stripped Gien of his power, therefore Atrus must be a true god. As a god, he was choosing me, the spiritual misfit from a Rivenese womb, to be his wife. I was transcending into deity and would lord over Riven forever. Okay, so it seems like the villagers, or perhaps the Moetis, think that Catherine is their savior and will save them from the oppressive god of Gen. As you remember, Gen has been very much trying to create the sense that he's a god over them with everything with the Wark and all the power and stuff he does. And they believe that Catherine is the one to save him. It's interesting, she said, of the Rivenese womb, so she's actually born on Riven. Thus the Moiety, as they call themselves, were born, a dissident society, sworn enemies of Gen. I did not know of their beliefs regarding Atris and myself until two days ago. Etty was, for some reason, hesitant to tell me. I can't figure out why. I know she doesn't believe these things. Of course, everyone else assumed that I would be aware of my own god status, so they made no effort to inform me. I only realized it at a recent gathering to which I was invited. I sat in front of a dimly lit and crowded cave as they told a mythical story of my own life, acting out the battle between Atris, myself, and Gen at the edge of the fissure. The events had been exaggerated into grandiose proportions. It was offensive, but I was unable to stop it. I was unable to break the illusion which is the very foundation of their hope and purpose, and which has given them courage to band together and rebel against Gen. Since then I've learned of other doctrines and beliefs have evolved, the most disturbing of which is the conviction that the conviction that one day I would return to Riven to free them. Some believed that I will overthrow Gen. Others believe I will bring them to paradise. I don't know how to deal with this. I fight it myself. I love these people, my only real kindred, but they will not love me as an equal, which hurts me. I would rather be their slave than their master. There's a drawing of Moiety Dagger. I don't know why it does this. Over the years, as Gin's powers become greater and greater, the Moiti's numbers have grown, and they have become more and more adept at hiding themselves. They now live in a complex network of caves that he still has not discovered. The Moiti, for the most part, have completely severed their relationship with any of the Rivenese that chose against joining them, but I hope they have not sacrificed vital limbs in order to remove the cancer. Even Father and Ent are still on the surface in Gin's domains, and I long to see them, but a... Dimness shrouds Etty's face every time I've mentioned them. Since this break took place, they have, inter they have interfered with the surface in superficial ways, occasionally sabotaging one of Gin's constructions or stealing food from the villagers. They wear strange masks and costumes during their short forays onto the island's surface, and take this regalia very seriously, refusing to be seen by anyone outside of the moiety unless they are properly attired. They get much pleasure out of the fact that those on the surface are frightened by their costumes, calling them evil spirits or ghosts. It was during one of these expeditions that they fortuitously rescued me from one of Gin's guards when I first appeared on the island. Otherwise, I'm sure I would have been delivered to Gin immediately. I have no doubt he's now searching for me. Of course, I am now aware that I was fooled. Atris is not here. It was, I was, at first, devastated by this realization. Now, I am thankful he would be an extreme peril here. Also, there's a quiet inner voice, an echoing remnant that wants him far away. So, this sort of section was about her being inducted into the moiety in there, and they do all these. They're separate from the villagers, and they're also against Gen. So, like we were saying earlier, there's three groups here. There's Gen and his people. There's the neutral villagers who are just afraid and sort of slaves to Gen, and then there's the moieties fighting against her. And the Moiti believes that Catherine is a god and will save them. I have just witnessed an age dying, gasping its last breath. Today I ventured to the surface to see what has become of this island. I hoped it would not be as bad as the Moiti had reported. It was worse. They have become slowly accustomed to its steady decay, but I was devastated. The lips from which the kiss is wrought has fallen words will fall cold breath. The room, womb from which the cry released has suffered hurt, hurt will suffer death. 
To get to the surface, we had to travel through a complex series of doors and passages. Before the last of these doors, they offered me a weapon, which I accepted, and then a mask. I held the mask in my hands for a while, wondering what sort of terror it might invoke in those members of my family who still live on the surface. But I also knew I must keep my identity hidden from Gin's ever-vigilant eye, so I accepted it as well. Then, together, we swam a short expanse and emerged out of the surface of the ocean under a rocky overhang. The harsh sunlight made my eyes sting, but the fresh, rich air was exhilarating after these past two weeks in dank caves. Two men with me were silent, communicating only with hand signals. The three of us emerged from our hiding place and made our way to the top of the plateau. At the edge of a thick and overgrown area of the forest, they stopped, peered through the foliage for a moment, and turned to me as if awaiting my command. But I could not respond. In fact, I found it difficult to move. I was smelling, hearing, breathing my youth. This swept over me in a matter of seconds, but in seconds more all feeling was gone. There was a numbness. So this is familiar. They're doing all these escapades through this jungle. And Catherine is sort of talking about what it's like growing up on Riven and now being behind these masks and causing terror and fear towards the villagers. Yeah, and there's even that little tree right there. Some birds flying. I don't know why it does this. Come on. We did not stay long on the surface, but it was long enough to see the worst. Riven, which was once an island, has split apart into five distinct pieces, about half a mile apart. Four of these have been claimed by Gin as his exclusive domain. Only his minister and personal militias are ever allowed to access them. From my vantage point at the edge of the forest, I could see three of these islands. They are stripped of their former beauty and are riddled with Gin's self-absorbed constructions. The Moiti rarely visit these closely guarded places. Okay, so that's interesting. And we've seen evidence of this before. For example, on the map room on Plateau Island, where we are up at the top, all of the islands, their pieces fit together into a square. And that's what Riven once was, but then it starts to drift apart and it collapses and it becomes separate islands. And that is where the title of the game comes from. So Riven means to like tear apart or to you know separate and that's what it is. These islands were rivened. So Riven, you know, talks about the age being broken and that's where it comes from. <clears throat> there is another island which I could not see as it has evidently crept away to a terrific distance. The Moiti are also very unclear as to what exists on this island, except for the fact they know it is where the great tree used to exist. The forest is located on the island, which the surface dwellers and the Moiti still refer to as Riven, but they also still refer to the entire world as Riven. The island is where the village is, which has changed dramatically. It is also one of the, rema the one remaining province of the people, though Gin's influence can be seen everywhere. Okay, and here you can see the four islands. So this is Temple Island. That's Jungle Island, which they call Riven. That's Plateau Island, with that, that dagger there. And there's Crater Island, and there's the drawbridge. And these are all trams. Of course, I know the reason for the fracturing of the island. The Moiti do not. Gin wrote this place, and it will die, as will all of Gin's ages eventually die. I feel nothing today. I am nothing. I live in a cave on a dying world inhabited by people that... They're treating me so strangely. They don't know how to relate to a god. I'm still an outcast here. They whisper amongst themselves, talking of my bravery during my excursion to the surface, how I walked across the island, bold and unafraid. They don't know me. Even Etty is uncomfortable around me. At times there's no awkwardness, and I am only... Katrin to her. But at other times, I'm something else. I'm afraid. There's such a gaunt numbness inside me. Today, I do not feel closeness with my people. Neither am I offended by their worship of me. I do not hate Gin. I don't feel anything. I'm not even sure of... But crossed out. 
at least Nela is still close. And Nela is the person who sent us this thing. I am boiling. I am... Gan is making and writing books. I wish they told me sooner. Atris should have realized this would happen, of course. Gin would have written all the materials necessary to the dunny craft of making books into this age. Probably every other age he had wrote. He's attempting to write his way out of here. We did not imprison him. We only delayed him. This age has become his factory, and the people are his machines, all laboring in his mad pursuit to become a god, to carry on his noble dunny cause. So far, he has not been able to produce a fully functional book. Atrus has never believed in destiny, but I, I don't know what else to call it. It's too perfect. It's too much of a coincidence. They hang on my every word, though they do not understand them. I am their hope, and now I have returned. I owe this to them. There is no choice. Oh, and there is the telescope we've seen earlier. It's been a long time since my last entry. It's hard to recognize, but I have found the star fissure. It is located on the island which the Rivenese call Alapo, meaning water pool, but which is referred to the, by the moiety as Alatuan, meaning pool of stars. Having once allowed Atris to escape this age without leaving an open door behind us, it has since been sealed with a skin of heavy iron. A crew telescope has been mounted over a locked viewport, the combination to which was acquired by the moiety before my arrival. So this is what the telescope is looking at. It's looking at the, the star fissure. And here we have a combination, which we are going to write down since we know how numbers work now. So that is number one, five, four, one, and three. Okay, that is good to know. That will allow us to open up the iron plating and see down into, the, into it. In the early days, the moiety, seeking an escape from Riven, briefly pursued the idea of reopening the fissure. They discovered a small mechanical stop to prevent the scope from hitting the portal window. Ultimately, however, they decided against opening it. I hate to think what would have happened to them if they had not left it alone. I've instructed them to stay away from it. I'm almost certain that, with the decayed state of the islands, opening the fissure would now be disastrous. I've heard that in the days immediately following Gin's confinement on Riven, he attempted to determine the feasibility of navigating the stars beneath the fissure, for he had seen the mistbook fall from Atris' hands into that very same space. To this end, he would have people, alleged excuse me, to this end, he would have people, alleged transgressors of the law, thrown into it so that he could observe their fate. The telescope, which still stands there, is the one he had built for those callous experiments. It is said that they did not die, but what became of their remains is a mystery. It appears that the limits of Gin's optics prevented him from learning their fate. The star field beneath the fissure is not as it seems. It is a gentle space, as hospitable to life as a flowing river. This is how Atris explained it, after he had fallen into it. But much more than that we've ever we've never understood, and we were never able to conclude upon its origins. But the visions tell me it was born out of the will to the Maker, perhaps for some greater purpose that we cannot yet understand. I still remember Atrus's words from his journal. I realized the moment I fell into the fissure that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. It continued falling into that starry expanse. There must be some greater reason behind it. So, if you remember, that is indeed the Star of Mist. The Star of Mist is the book falling, and Atrus falling into the starry fissure, the starry expanse. I neglected to mention it earlier. The unique shape of one of the great daggers which appeared during our escape from Riven, the very dagger that stands vertically at one of the end of Alatuan, which is the island we link to Jungle Island, has been adopted by the moiety as the symbol of their cause. It is a sacred symbol for them. It is the representation of all of their doctrine, doctrine and their representation of me. To deface this symbol is sacrilege. They have their own mythical explanation regarding its sudden origins. I haven't told them I wrote it into the age, along with all the other daggers. 
It is strange how such a young religion can be so unbending even to their own God. I've tried to dissuade them of the notion that the symbols contain so much power. The enemy uses this paranoia against them. They are fearful of Gen's symbol and are terrorized by symbolic use of the wark. Okay, so it says wark there. Um, I kind of gave it away a little bit early, but indeed, the wark is what it's called. And everything we are sort of figured out earlier is true, that Gen is using the wark as this power and it controls them. It's representative of his power over them. But they don't want to hear this from me. Perhaps my attempts have even caused some of the younger members of the moiety to doubt that I am Catherine. My rare encounters with those who say they follow again have been discouraging. I've hoped to have some communication with the surface villagers, but they always flee from me. But I've heard news of some of the villagers' beliefs regarding Gin. Soon after we trapped Gin on Ribbon, he claimed that he was responsible for the daggers, placing them around the island as a reminder of their failure. In the village circles, it is told that this was a punitive act performed by Gin to mark the beginning of the period of restitution, at the end of which, if they have proven their devotion to him, will be delivered unto a new and better existence. Yep, Gin is definitely trying to play God here. And we've already seen that in many, many facets of Riven. And it's very clear right now what he's trying to do. I will continue to try and reach them. The door is open and Gin is free. Gin has the ability to create working books. In fact, he had written one age before I arrived, but has kept this accomplishment so well hidden that only his closest ministers were aware until now. I'm not sure. Perhaps he has written others. Other news. A few years ago, before the moiety were forced into hiding, one of them managed to steal what appeared to be a test book that Gin had intended to destroy. It had been partially written, but did not work. They didn't tell me about it until now because they thought it was useless. Back then, none of Gin's books worked. But instead of correcting the problem at its source, he blamed it on the impure wood of the Riven Forest and proceeded to engineer a cumbersome mechanical remedy, a complex series of domes, to heal his book's inherent flaws. One of the consequences of this crude solution, however, was that the domes demanded huge amounts of energy, and the related problems delayed his success for quite some time. At last, however, he finished his work and was finally able to link to an age, but he kept his success extremely well hidden. However, for some reason or another, belligerent pride, he has made modifications to the domes which make it obvious he's using the domes to breathe life into his half-dead books. Perhaps he means to lure us into using the books and the domes. He can't believe that we would blindly swallow this suicidal bait. But he wouldn't know that we have one of his books, the stolen burnt book. There's a possibility of, crossed out, have read burnt book. The age it describes would be unsuitable for a new home for the moiety. Must be modified. I will dream. Have requested a group to solve the combination that will open the domes. Once open, we can power the burnt book. I do not think Gen will interfere. He will leave the bait. And there's some drawings of this place that we're in right now. You can see that's like the lake sort of here, and there's all these edges of cliffs, and this thing that they've built here, this tree-looking thing. Come on. Have begun writing the Moiti's Age. Now must acquire a second book from Gen. There is tension. A strain blurs my vision and nightmares. Nela and Eti stay close. And there is the dagger opening the starfisher with Gen's watchful eye behind it. Much has happened. Almost everything is prepared. We have stolen another book, but I'm concerned Gin will miss it. We've also discovered the combinations for entering the domes, but we have not discovered the method for powering them. By powering our burnt book with Gin's domes, we will be able to link to this age, but we will only have access to the domes for a short time before we are discovered. Therefore, we can only use the domes, oops, only use the domes once. I must find another way to make the books work. 
The gateway images and Gin's books and our burnt book all seem to share the same sickness. If they are not powered, the images are black. It might be possible to clear the vision with only the right substance into the moiety age. Here's some pictures of drawings. Hard to tell kind of what it is, but there's pointing out this here. Maybe they're talking about that book window sort of thing that they're working on. All is ready. Now all we can do is wait for a word from the moiter esque who are on the lookout for Gin to power and use the domes. When he does that, we will have access to one of Gin's domes just long enough. After linking to the age which I've written, I only have to locate the book window substance and refine or adapt it. Laying this window over the gateway image should heal what the books and make them work. This will allow me to use the second stolen book and return to Riven with more of... Come on. Return to Riven with more of the book windows. We will no longer have to rely on Gin's clumsy domes. I laugh at these plans. I sound like Atreus. So what she's going to do is use the, the one age that they have. So when Gin powers the domes at one point, they're also going to use it to power that book. They're going to link to that book and get some of the substance which they need for their book windows. And they're going to bring that back. And then once they have that, they can do not have to worry about going through the domes. They can just use the book windows. <clears throat> I'm risking my life, but I feel no fear, only anxiety. Perhaps this is the source of my nightmares. The fissure, like a great wound, is opened. It stains the riven soil with blood. I hold the moiety's knife. The voices grow so loud. For their part, the moiety have... <sighs> complete faith that I will accomplish my task and lead them to a better world is the fulfillment of their prophecy. But they are also fearful and tense. I don't know what they will do or think if I fail. It is done. It seems too good to be true. It still feels like a dream. We have already evacuated all of the moiety to this new age. Ah, it's just got to be a glitch or something. It is beautiful and I am pleased. At last, my people will live in safety and comfort. They stand under the bare sky, unafraid and dazzled by their freedom. They are happy. They have named it Tay, and that's where we are now. There's still much to be done. We're not protected yet. The only way to completely safeguard this place is to destroy the book which links here from Riven. But I do not even know how to bring this up to... The Moiety. They will be extremely reluctant about destroying their only link to Riven. I shut this hesitation. I would be cutting off my only conne connection. But for their sake, it must be done. I am anxious to know if our activities have aroused Gin's suspicions. If so, we must act quickly. Even so, I feel that we are now impregnable. Tomorrow, I will return to Riven to see Gin's reaction for myself. But tonight, I finally rest. All right, so. I think I tried to explain everything as we went, but, uh, it's very interesting to see what it's like from Catherine's point of view, and clearly this, most of this was written before she got imprisoned, and when she was in prison, the only thing that was afterwards is that book. It's not the book, the, uh, the letter she gave us. So this, this age that we're on is the safe haven for the moiety, as we sort of thought about earlier. And it's too bad we can't explore it, but Um, okay, so what we need to do is figure out how to power the domes because that is what she said they used, what Gen uses to get to his age is power the domes. And we have to figure out how to do that, of course, if we want to go to Gen's age because we're going to have to capture him and he might, he's probably in his age right now. So we're going to think about how to do that, but we're going to go ahead and do that in the next episode. This has been Retro Gaming Now playing Riven, the sequel to Mist. In the next episode, we're going to take this linking book back to Riven and see if we can solve the mystery of the domes. All right, have a great day. I'll see you guys later.